So recently, I've gotten a lot of questions about double deck pitch and double deck pitch versus the shoe game. And so I want to talk about that a little bit and whether it's even really worth it to play double deck pitch. There's some things you need to consider. So generally, it's true that less decks is less advantage for the house. So let's compare the typical six deck shoe game to a double deck game. And in pitch, of course, the cards are dealt face down. And so you only see your own cards, theoretically, okay? Most of the time you can peek at your neighbor's card or maybe they'll even show you their card. You show me yours, I'll show you mine kind of thing. Tends to happen at the table. Some casinos are super strict on that. Most are pretty lax. When I first started out, I thought I was going to be playing double deck all the time. I thought that was that was the game. And there's some double deck games where it's not even pitched, it's dealt out of a shoe. That is definitely the preferred of all the double deck games. You'd much rather have it dealt out of a shoe because then you can see all the cards just like you can in any other shoe game. One of the challenges with pitch is that you just see your two cards and then if you're dealing with a full table or close to a full table even, you can't see that many of the cards. You eventually see them. They lay them down and you can get the count for the next round. But on decisions like insurance, for example, that's the one where it comes up the most. It's very hard to make the correct insurance decision because if you're counting cards at a true count of plus three, generally depends on the count you're using and things like that, but generally on a, on a true count of plus three, or higher, you're going to want to take insurance. Well, if you if there's a lot of cards that you can't see, you may not know whether to take insurance or not, especially since you only have two decks. So a lot of times, the running count and the true count are the same. So let's say you go into the round and you have a running count of even, or even negative one or something like that, right? So you're not thinking about insurance right now. But there's, say, five people at the table, including yourself. That's not even full. And the cards get dealt out, and you're looking at your hand, and you've got 16, let's say. Okay? A 10 and a 6. So you, that didn't change the count. It's still negative 1. But you don't know what the other people have. Nobody's taking insurance, and nobody's taking even money. So... That kind of tells you, if no one's taking even money, nobody probably has blackjack. So that's an ace and a ten that aren't there. Nobody's taking insurance. Well, a lot of people don't take insurance ever, not even on a 20. But it could mean that there's no big hands out there. There's, no, there's a lot of small cards out there. Could be a lot of people have hands like 16 because nobody's going to take insurance on that. It's hard to tell. It depends on the type of players that you have. So... You've been playing with them for a little while, you know how they play their hand, you might have an idea. But, again, you're still guessing. If it had been a shoe game, you could see all those cards. Let's say, you know, five, six, four, three, three, you're ten, six, somebody else has got six, nine, right? Well, now, all these small cards came out. You now have a running count that's higher than plus three, and since you're deal since you already are at least a full deck into the shoe, into the double deck shoe, you now know that you should take insurance, okay? Because all those small cards came out, giving you a higher count. Well, if they're d face down and people are holding them and you can't see them, you don't know, so you're gonna have to pass on the insurance. It's not a huge deal to miss one insurance bet, but that's just one example of where the shoe game is better. The other thing is that a lot of times you have to be, it depends on if all things are equal. Okay, so if a pitch game has exactly the same rules as the shoe game and exactly the same percentage of penetration, so in other words, if they deal the shoe game, they deal 80% of the cards, 
before they reshuffle, and the same 80% on the double deck game. So that would mean almost five out of six decks being dealt, at least four and three quarters decks being dealt out of six, okay, before they shuffle. So they put that cut card a deck and a quarter or better from the end. And on double deck, less than half a deck left. Okay, so if you're if they're cutting a six deck shoe and we add about one and a quarter decks left and they're cutting the double deck game at slightly less than half a deck left then the penetration on those two is the same okay so if the penetration is the same and the rules are the same now both these things are rare a lot of times a double deck game they cut it right in half okay so if you're only getting 50 percent penetration on a double deck game right there it's probably not worth it Okay, and also make sure you're actually, first of all, getting paid three to two on blackjack. There's a lot of double deck games out there where you only get paid six to five. Then the other thing is a lot of times they limit you on how you can play. Like they won't let you double down on anything other than 10 or 11 on double deck. Or the shoe game, they let you double after you split and they won't on the double deck game. Maybe once I saw, yeah, I think once I saw a double deck game where you could resplit your aces, but you almost never will find that where you could resplit your aces on a double deck game. It's hard to find it on shoe games even, but there are quite a few on shoe games where you can resplit your aces. The rules all have to be equal. If the rules are a lot better and the penetration's a lot better on the shoe game, then right there you already know the shoe game's better. Now, Let's say that everything is equal. Let's say it's the same rule, same penetration. So the double deck game now is, in theory, a better game. But let's say it's not dealt out of a shoe, it's pitch. Okay, now if it's pitch, you have to contend with the fact that you can't see all the cards, so that you're, you're handicapped on the insurance. But you will eventually see all the cards, so you have, as long as you're good at keeping the count and it is a little trickier, it's a little more work because you have to remember which cards you saw and which cards you didn't see, okay? So you either have to wait and not count at all until the end of the round and then try to quickly scan all the cards that are down there, or you have to remember which ones exactly you saw already and which ones you didn't. Okay, so it, it's a little bit more work. And because of that extra mental work, you won't probably be, probably be able to stay sharp for as long. You're going to need more breaks. At least most people will. Okay. The other thing is the count is going to spike up and down much more rapidly on a double deck game. Initially, this is why I love the double deck game and why I thought I'd be playing it all the time because you get these huge swings in the count which in a way is great because you'll have, and in the beginning, you know, when I wasn't playing with that much money, it was fine. So you have a minimum bet out there, you know, say one unit, and then the count could jump drastically so that you go from your one unit bet to say four or five units, right? If you're using a big spread. Well, that's fine, I guess, if you're playing at a $5 table and your unit is, is $5 and you go from 5 to 25 that might not draw too much heat. But what if your unit is black chips and you go from 100 to 500 and then back down to 100 again? That might draw a little bit of heat. I even got heat on a double deck game one time, uh, and it was pretty much a red chip game. I was spreading my bet from five and then I would jump up to like $75 okay so this is when I first got started so I go from five to 75 and back down to five and back up to 75 well the trouble was every time I bet five I lost and every time I bet 75 I either got blackjack or a double down and they all paid I, you know the double downs all worked perfectly and you know obviously got paid on the blackjacks and so I got I got flat bedded is what happened. 
floor came over and told me that I was going to have to flat bet the rest of the shoe or I'd have to get out of his casino. And he, those weren't exactly the words he used. He was actually quite angry about it, which kind of surprised me. Anyway, I was surprised for those low limits that that happened. Now you can imagine what happens at higher limits. So you get a lot more heat on double deck. A lot of casinos don't think that too many people can count properly with six decks. And so they don't pay that much attention to those six deck games. They watch the double deck and the single deck games a lot more closely. And that's the reason why most of the professional players that I know and that I've heard from have gone away from double deck. They play more shoe games now because you just you get a lot less heat. It's easier. You see all the cards. And the count doesn't fluctuate that drastically until you get towards the end of the shoe. So you can you can have a more natural progression of your bets. You can look more like a, the typical ploppy or sucker out there where it just might you can make it look like you're just parlaying your bet. You're just increasing on a win, decreasing on a loss. So you can have a more natural flow to your game. You're not going to be changing your bet from one unit to five back to one on a, on a shoe game like you are on double deck. Uh, otherwise, if you play double deck, you have to play with a lot of cover and not jump your bet up and down like that. And then you're giving away all the extra advantage that you had in the first place. I hope that answers the question about double deck versus the shoe games and how you play those. Everyone have fun out there and may the count be with you. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like the video if you did like it. Please subscribe our YouTube channel for more videos like this. I'll send you updates whenever we make a video. Uh, a lot of videos are much better than this one. <laughs> um, and uh, even if you didn't like the video, subscribe anyway. There's no cost to subscribing. Thank you all again.